Success! I'm getting heat out of my cheap Chinese diesel heater. Got a little bit of fuel in the tank. And I do mean a little. Making a good little uh, roar there. I had some wiring issues at first. I was trying to use a uh, 12 volt uh, <laughs> car adapter. And so I ended up just going over to straight uh, clips there and going onto a battery instead of using something like a Jackery or Go Zero. So I was having problems before with the wiring, not getting the panel to come up. It was a polarity issues and continuity and a fusing issue. But now I'm uh, getting some heat out of here, so that's pretty good. I'm going to have to move this sucker around though. Uh, <laughs> Or I'm gonna smoke myself out of the garage here. Get outdoors here, so what are we doing today? Well, I'm trying out a cheap Chinese diesel heater for camping purposes. I'm using them for RVs and whatnot. Uh, I had a little troubleshooting I had to go through. Uh, wiring, I tried to put a little uh, DC plug on there and uh, <laughs> Had a problem, I think, blew a fuse on the plug or something, polarity issues and whatnot. But so finally got my display to work and uh, got the unit to prime itself and pump fuel through the system. Now it's actually outputting heat, so it's not too bad. So let's check it out. Okay, so there's the uh, cover for the heater, and I uh, just got a regular 12 volt battery and. Uh, made a little stand for this guy out of some pressure treated and non-pressure treated wood um, got my muffler hooked up and the exhaust coming out and uh, it's fairly warm it's not super hot but it's it's warm got a little bit of separation there so I'm not touching the wood too much and uh, it's got a drain hole a little weep hole on the bottom of it that's one thing to note though when you hook these up and uh, yeah, I tried uh, using a different set of wires. Uh, this originally just came straight wires coming out, and I had this one that goes to the little gator clips. This one works. Um, tried using one that went from little terminal lugs out to an SAE connector, and then it reversed the polarity, and it went out to a 12-volt DC plug. And it ended up having polarity issues, and I guess the fuse blew out in the... Uh, DC plug thing so I'll have to fix that eventually if I want to use it for jackery but there's the uh, air inlet right there and uh, I'm gonna hook that back up to the case in a little bit but it's just got a little filter there and you could probably put a little of that foamy stuff on there like you put around your uh, lawnmower air filters and that would keep any uh, extra dust and crap out of there so the core of this it's a little uh, heater. It's kind of a clone of a German Webasto type heater. And you got the uh, fuel tank in here. A little pump that siphons fuel up in there and it pulsates. And then uh, wiring. There's a little fuse holder down in the bottom and whatnot. And then another wiring harness comes out here to the display. So I set it down to lower setting right now. I could crank this back up a little bit. You'll hear the pulsating uh, speeding up a little bit over time with the faster rate there. First time using it, so still getting used to everything, but uh, not too bad. Got warm air coming out of there. <clears throat> I have to tinker around with a little bit, but uh, I'll put a little more fuel in there and put that lid back on, screw it on, and uh, see how it works for a while. I just wanted to get it out of my garage so uh, I'm not filling a bunch of carbon monoxide and smoke in here. <laughs> Wind up like the former neighbor. Here we are with the uh, case all reconnected back up to it. I uh, used one of their little clamps, I uh, <laughs> pinched a hose like a metal hose for the air inlet here but it didn't you know break it or anything but 
I just did this on my setup. If you did it underneath an RV or something, you probably just route it out under the vehicle and route your piping wherever. Uh, I'm gonna put a little more diesel in here in a moment so I don't run out of fuel or I'll generate an error code. Uh, this one I got from Viver. <laughs> you give me Viver. Viver! So that was just the site online I'd seen a bunch of them at. You can get them on Amazon, a bunch of other places. Uh, but you can see 12 volts, 40 watts of uh, power that you need, and this is a 5 kilowatt unit. They, I think they have like a 2 to 3 kilowatt, 5 kilowatt, and an 8. And the 8, they say, is kind of like an overboosted 5, but I just figured I'd go in the middle. It's probably like 13,000 uh, BTUs or something, roughly, so I thought, well, that's probably good enough. The five to eight thousand BTU stuff that's like two to three that's more similar to like what I have on my little Coleman heaters and whatnot so for hot tenting I wanted a little more oomph so we'll see how this does as the weather gets cold and uh, I'm gonna try this out in the hot tent and be interesting to see how it does see how the uh, exhaust and all that goes but um, one thing I learned too online there's a couple videos out there uh, some gentlemen do some really good work with explaining all the error codes and the routing and all this stuff. Uh, so with the exhaust, only put at most a couple of curves, because if you do more than 270 degrees of curving, you know, like 390s, you're going to start kinking it up. But I only have two uh, bends in there right now. So you've got the uh, inlet line for fresh air and then you've got the outlet for the exhaust right there silver one um, I had to take the original case cover off to get the uh, band clamps on there hold them on tight and everything but uh, with clearance and stuff eh, I figured it was easier to make a stand so I had enough clearance for the pipe and everything get a good uh, downward drain on it too so if there's any condensation in it it'll drain down I won't have any problems and then likewise move my inlet up here away from it so I'm not too close to each other in a vehicle you probably have one facing forward and one facing back or something um, if you're coming through the floor of like an RV or something like that but in this case for camping this is good enough I could probably put a small battery bank or something down below here just something to keep it out of the snow too if I want um, eventually I probably get some more uh, extended wiring and try to see if I can actually hook this up to a Jackery or a Gold Zero type power bank and then I can just keep the power bank inside the tent with me I don't have to worry about rain or freezing temperatures or anything and then this can kind of be out you know maybe have a little uh, you know bit of canopy over it above you know a few feet but other than that it should be alright one of the other neat features about this heater ones with the LCD control is some of them have this little remote control so you can turn the unit on and off or change the speed. You know, so I turned it down to one, I'll go up to two, and I'll go up to three, all by the push of a remote. So that's kind of neat that you can do some of that. Uh, when I was having wiring issues with this, I did buy a regular rotary style controller. It's just I have an on off and a uh, like a speed setting for the fan. I got one of those as a backup because you never know with LCDs how they're going to be, but they're like 10 bucks, so it'll eventually come in. I'll have it as a spare part in case I ever need it. But uh, yeah, this sucker's uh, pumping out some pretty good heat right now. Definitely want to put up a hot tent and try this out. Well, everybody, if you like what you've seen, feel free to like, comment, subscribe. I'll catch you again in the outdoors. As always, thanks for watching.